All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, thank you for coming out to Summit. Enjoy talking to you guys. Uh, you guys may have heard I have a program coming out later this summer. It's called Day Game. Thought I'd give you guys a little sneak peek of some of the stuff that we have in that program uh, today. And then I have another speech on Thursday where we'll go even more in depth. Uh, we'll kind of start with the basics and go from there. Uh, and the great thing about Day Game for me is, well, first of all, it's what I started with. When I was 18 years old, uh, that's when I started pickup, and I couldn't even go to a club for three years. So I wasn't even able to do night game. So what I did is I was in college at the time, and I would go out, go out on my campus, and basically I had a rule that every time I saw an attractive girl, I had to approach her. Now, for me, I didn't know you could approach girls in groups, so what this actually meant is every time the wounded gazelle left the group, I had to approach her. Um, but I did so many approaches in my first two years of college, uh, that I basically had talked to and gotten a date with or been rejected by every single hot girl on my campus. And then I transferred schools and did it again at another school for two more years. And that's how I learned game. That's at least how I started learning game. Uh, and to me, day game is the purest form of pickup. It's pickup with no distractions. It's just you and the girl, no loud music, no dragway friends. Uh, you have access to just about any girl on the planet. You don't have to worry about like VIP ropes and that kind of stuff. Um, so I love it. And I think that if you can learn day game, and then you can also learn to escalate maybe a little more, because night game you have to escalate in ways you don't have to in the daytime. But if you learn escalation and then you learn day game, you're basically golden. And even if you do mostly night game, if you do learn day game, it's going to improve your verbals, it's going to improve your ability to build comfort, it's going to improve everything you do with the girl once you leave the club with her, it's going to improve your ability to be in a relationship, all those kind of things, because it's very normal, it's very natural, and it's a very low energy form of game. Uh, which is what I think game should be. And we'll kind of get into that in a bit. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to start off with the absolute basics of day game, just like how to open, et cetera, et cetera. We'll go pretty quickly on that one. Uh, and then we'll go through some more and more nuanced points the further we go. So this will go from sort of a beginner level all the way up to some of the stuff will be fairly advanced. Uh, and then on my talk on Thursday, I'll get into the really advanced points. Uh, but throughout, I'll be breaking it down through infield, demonstration, et cetera. All right, so that's the kind of the game plan that we're going to go with. Um, basics of day game, though. Why is day game different than night game? Well, the old joke is it's different because the sun is out, and that's it, right? And to a certain extent, that's true because game is game. However, there are some, some general differences that do come about. And the biggest one has to do with energy level. If you're in a nightclub, girls are dancing, they're all over the place, they're you know, bouncing off the walls, they're drunk, they have friends screaming, that kind of stuff. In the daytime, it is a lower energy vibe. And what that means, actually, it's quite to your benefit, is that you don't have to be as high energy to get success. All right? um, in game, you want to do the least amount of effort possible at all times. All right? If you can get a result by just looking at a girl rather than speaking a paragraph to her, it's better to get that result just by looking at her. If you can get the girl to come over just by like, beckoning her over and saying, like, hey, come over here, I want to talk to you for a minute. The less effort possible, the better, because it's higher value, it's more assertive, it's more entitled, et cetera. Also, low energy for its own sake is good. I'll give you guys a quick little graph, a little chart of kind of how game works. So this is energy and this is time. How you need to essentially game is at the start of the set, you're going to need to get her attention. So you're going to have to be somewhat high energy. Okay? You're going to have to have a high enough energy level to get her attention. And then over time, you want to sort of like lower it down. For example, if you're like cuddling on a bed with a girl, you're not burning a lot of calories there. You're not talking a million miles an hour. You're talking very slowly. You're very relaxed. It's very intimate. All right, so it's a very different vibe. What's going to happen, though, is that as your energy level goes down, there's a tendency for things to become boring. Right? And a lot of guys will lose sets when they bring their energy down. What you need to be doing is, with escalation, it starts very low, and it increases with time. Right? So what you're doing is you're replacing energy with escalation. Right? Or you can replace energy with intimacy. The more emotionally charged the topics are and the more like, intimately you're connecting with someone, the less energy you need. Okay? But the interesting thing is because at the end, this low energy level is what you're trying to get to. If you start way up here, you have a harder job to do than if you start down here or if you start down here. The great thing about day game is you're naturally at that low energy level. So what I suggest to you is don't ruin that for yourself. You want to go in in all sets 
in the lowest energy level you possibly can to hold the set. Okay? Now, if you go too low, that's bad because then you just don't get her attention, right? If you go over and like tap the girl on the shoulder and she feels like a butterfly just landed, like that's not gonna work. You have to be loud enough, you have to get her attention. So you have to err on the side of, of you know, getting her attention. But beyond that, you don't wanna be hyper, you don't wanna be a dancing monkey. So that's one general principle of all game. Second general principle of all game, but especially day game, is good game should not look like game and it should not feel like game, okay? A lot of guys, say you go approach a girl on a street corner. If I see you 20 minutes later, you're probably still standing on that same street corner with the girl. Or actually, probably she got weirded out 10 minutes ago that you were still standing on that street corner and she left, right? But you wouldn't do that with a friend. You wouldn't do that with your girlfriend. You wouldn't just stand on a street corner doing nothing, facing each other and talking. People don't do that. Right? The only time that's done is in a cold approach. Or worse yet, say the girl's sitting down and you're like towering over her and talking at her that looks and feels like a cold approach. And as long as it looks and feels like a cold approach, it looks and feels like you need to prove something to her, like you're trying to get something from her, and like you don't know each other, right? As soon as you're sitting with her or taking her somewhere with you, now all of a sudden it feels more normal and natural. Okay, so anything and everything you can do to make it normal and natural is good. So ask yourself two questions. First question is, would I do this if she was already my girlfriend? If the answer is yes, that's probably a decent behavior to be engaging in. Second one, would I do this if uh, she was my best friend who I'd known for years and years and I didn't even want to have sex with her? Right? If you could answer yes to both of those, the action you're doing is probably normal and natural. It might not necessarily lead in and of itself to sex, but it's certainly not going to deny you from things going well. Right? So those are good questions to ask yourself. But remember, good game does not look like game. And remember that throughout as I show you guys videos. Now, third and final thing. And this is kind of particular to my style of game, but I think it's good game in general, and it's, it's good sales in general as well, is close early, close often, close late. Most guys that get to sort of an intermediate level at game, what they do is they get pretty good at getting the girl attracted to them. And then they just sit there talking to the girl and trying to get her more and more attracted, more and more attracted, and they assume if they get the girl attracted enough, the situation will work itself out. Not the case, okay? You do not need a girl 10 out of 10 attracted to you to sleep with you. Seven out of 10 will do if you solve the problems and make it easy for it to happen. If you get her 10 out of 10 attracted and her friends aren't down, her logistics are bad, um, the timing's bad, she has transportation issues, all that kind of stuff, it's not gonna happen. If she's seven out of 10 attracted and it seems like a cool, fun thing to do and it seems like there's no risk and consequence, she'll probably go with you. Okay, so instead of working on getting her more and more and more and more and more attracted, Work instead on getting her attracted enough and then solving the problems go that go with. And if you try and close at the very end, you're never gonna find out the problems you need to solve. So say you're talking to a girl for 45 minutes, get her attracted, have a good conversation, and at the very end you're like, hey, let's go do something. And at that point, this is the time when you have to go somewhere, she has to go somewhere. You're gonna get every single objection right then. You'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I have to get to work, and I have my friends, and I'm meeting this, and I've, uh, I live half an hour away. And all of a sudden, there's this overwhelming amount of objections. And you'll be like, OK, well, fine. Let's just do phone numbers, and that'll be that. Right? And that's fine. Phone numbers are great. Uh, in fact, in, in day game, a lot of times, you'll have to settle for phone numbers because you have logistical problems. But better yet is if you can figure things out, solve the problem, and go ahead and take her somewhere right then and there. If, on the other hand, within the first minute or two of meeting her, you're already suggesting things you might do together, or you're already suggesting things that you're into, or you're already moving her a little bit you're gonna to start to find out those objections very early on, when they are not objections yet, when they're not a big problem for the set. And then you're gonna have 45 minutes to figure out how to solve them. Does that make sense? So you need to know the objections before you can solve the objections. And that's why you wanna close early, um, close often, close late. The more times you close, the more you're gonna get that information, and the more she's gonna kind of be used to the process. However, it's very, very important that your closes not ruin the set, okay? Uh, there's a concept I call social capital. This is one of the absolute key concepts in my game. Uh, and social capital basically says this. With every human being in the world, you have sort of a bank account of what you can get away with and what you can't get away with socially. So if you walk up to a stranger and ask him for $1,000, how often do you expect the stranger to say yes to you? Two people think none and everybody else doesn't know. How often do you expect them to say yes? Basically none, right? Absolutely. However, if you were to ask like, your parents for like a thousand dollars and you're like in need you're like hey I really need to just get through this little bit I'm working on some stuff can you give me a thousand dollars you know 
to get me back on my feet. How many people's parents could probably scrape together a grand for you if they absolutely had to? Most people could, right? It depends on your relationship with your parents, but you know, for a lot of people, you could. The, the thing that's going on there is that you have probably more social capital with your parents, right? There's more shared history. They have more invested in you. They have more of an outcome in you succeeding, right? Because you've had a lot of positive experience. The same could work for a friend to a lesser degree. Um, so the idea here is that every single time you try and close and fail, you've burnt some of your social capital, right? If you say, hey, let's go somewhere, and she says no, that's not a good thing. And that's why most guys don't try and close. The secret is to learn to close in a way that can't be rejected. Okay, the secret is to learn to close in a way where you're not, you're, you're finding out the information, you're seeding the close, but you're not actually necessarily putting yourself out there. Okay, so as an example, uh, instead of saying, hey, let's go to my house right now, which by the way is something you should never, ever, ever say in game for a myriad of reasons. Um, instead you might say, oh, you know what, there's somewhere I'd love to, actually, you know what, I don't know you that well yet, I can't take you there yet. Right? right there, you've done almost the exact same thing as if you said, let's go to my house right now. Except that you seemed hesitant, and you didn't make a big deal of it, and you didn't try for anything. So you put into the conversation the idea of you guys having future plans. Right? You're setting that up down the road, but you did it in such a way that they can't say no, because you already said no first. And if anything, they're going to say, no, no, why not? Why can't we go somewhere? Right? Because now you're in the position of selector. All right, so that's um, one big thing about closing is you want to close in the negative oftentimes early on. The second thing you want to do a lot of times is what I call the soft close. Soft close basically means instead of asking for everything, you ask for it in little pieces that they're going to say yes to. All right, so again, every time they say no, it gets harder to hear yes. Every time they say yes, it gets easier to hear the next yes. So for example, if you said, uh, let's grab a drink Tuesday night at 7 o'clock at like Joe's Taqueria or whatever, that's a very specific request. It's very likely you're going to hear a no to that. Even if they'd like to see you, it's very likely they just have plans at that time. So it's not the best way to ask. However, if you said, you know what, you're kind of a fun person. You'd, I wouldn't mind talking to you again sometime, possibly. They'd be like, yeah, sure. Because they can say sure to that without it obligating them. Right? And then you'd be like, you know what, do you prefer, um, do you prefer like, drinks or do you prefer like, you know, um, I don't know, going like, to the park, whatever the hell, whatever your two choices of activities are. And then they say, oh, no, I, I like to drink. Right? So now they've agreed that they want to see you, they've agreed they like to drink, now you'll be like, okay, what's your schedule like this week? Then they say, oh, I'm busy here, here, here. They're like, okay, cool, let's grab the drink at Joe's on Tuesday. And since you got those three yeses, they've already complied along the way. Also, they've told you a time when they're likely free, so you're not fighting their schedule. Right? So that's the idea of the soft close. So instead of going for like everything all at once as one specific discrete move, if you do it in three or four steps, you're much more likely to hear yes. And also, if and when you do hear no, it's going to be a soft no. So it won't be a no that derails the entire interaction. Okay? So with the idea of closing in the negative and the idea of the soft close, you can close very often. You'll see when I start talking to girls here, um, many of the approaches, I start moving the girls around within 30 seconds of meeting them. Okay? And that's very, very common for me. And the reason I can do it is because I'm doing it in a low risk manner. Okay? So these are general principles of game and general principles of day game. First, do less if possible. Game at a lower energy level. Secondly, good game does not look like game. Third, close early, close often, close late.